love this country. So simple and easy. We're officially checked in. Yep. Sean is officially, he belongs to the boat, so they didn't stamp his passport. So a little trick. Pretty cruisers out there worried about the Schengen visa bullshit. Get your STCW, go get a seaman's book, and then you belong to the boat, so you don't they don't stamp your passport. You just wherever the boat goes and however long the boat stays in the Schengen area, you can stay with the boat. And are there any restrictions or I mean you're technically not supposed to leave like the harbor city the harbor area, area, but he's he's like a Go, go enjoy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. twenty three euros a night here for us. Oh, wow. But this time we actually do get power and water. And it's we can't included. anchor? We're not allowed to anchor. That sucks. Unless you tell them you don't have insurance. Alright, well should we go find like, I want a good meal. Yeah. A nice meal. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Our first day in Fayal was off to a solid start. And it was interesting to notice the immediate similarities and differences compared to Flores. This port in the city of Horta had a long-standing history as a hub for sailors crossing the Atlantic for many, many years. Every inch of cement for over a mile was covered in boat artwork, so there was no way we were finding a spot for a big Delos mural here. We were excited for the change of pace and to be surrounded by way more boats and tons of hustle and bustle. But of course, the old school flavor was still very present as the city was full of Azorian tradition and culture around every corner. Just as thousands of transatlantic sailors had done before us, we made our first stop the legendary Peter's Cafe, which has welcomed mariners for over a century. Whoa. That was Welcome to Horta. Lovely. <laughs> Little did we know, we were in for some very unique adventures here in File we would find ourselves diving with beautiful blue sharks. Horseback riding in the countryside, swimming with massive mantas around offshore pinnacles, climbing a volcano to the highest point in Portugal, and even going up in the sky in a flying dinghy. We were skeptical at first if the rest of the Azorian islands could at all compare to Flores, but I suppose we'll leave that decision up to you. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. So excited. We get the opportunity to dive with sharks today. We decided to go with a dive company here to kind of feel out the vibe, see where they go, see how many sharks there are, if it's common to see them or not. But do you want some of my shark facts? Yeah. 
Mako sharks are really interesting. They're like the cheetah of the ocean. They're super fast. When they're hunting, they can go up to 60 miles an hour. And they also have the biggest brain per body mass of any shark. So they're considered to be super intelligent. Yeah, and then blue sharks are a lot smaller and they're kind of like the kitty cats of the sea. Um, and they're not, it's not very often that you can dive with them, I think, because they're very, very plegic. So I don't know, we'll see which ones we see today. Um, but I'm excited. Oh yeah, my funny blue shark fact is that uh, the female's skin is two and a half times thicker than the male's skin because when they mate, the males bite them so hard. Bruh. Yeah, I know, right? All right, let's do it. Yeah, because uh, these are pelagic sharks, it's kind of hard for us to do it on our own, and I'm pretty sure they chum the water as well, which is something that we know nothing about or how to do to attract sharks. It's kind of controversial. And in order to get sharks close, you have to chum the water. It's the same thing they do all over the world, but it's kind of like then they associate food with boats and food with people. So it's super controversial, but at the same time, if you don't do it, then you'll never get footage and you'll never capture them in the wild and raise awareness about sharks. So, but we're gonna try it. We've never done anything like this before. So I'm really excited. It'd be really cool to get in the water with some, some big pelagic sharks. Have you ever dug with mako or blue sharks? No, I've never seen a mako or a blue. Ah, uh, no, never seen a mako yeah, or a blue underwater. Okay, we are attracting uh, three different species of sharks. Uh, the main start of the show is of course the blue shark. Super easy to identify, nice elongated bodies, beautiful long snout and massive pectoral fins. Okay, they are just like puppies. They're super, super curious. They come super close. They like to touch you, okay? They like to rub you. I will ask you not to allow that, that behavior on the animal, because once these animals get a little bit more comfortable with you guys, the next step is little nibbles. He's not biting, he's nibbling. And that behavior only comes when you let him be super comfortable with you, okay? Now, it's completely forbidden to touch or kick or do anything physical with the shark. So the only way to actually move the shark away is one simple thing. Sharks are extremely sensitive on the opening gills. So when they come really close to you, all you have to do is a slap with your hand, a slap on the water, creating a water flow onto the gills. This will create a gentle flow on, on the gills of the animal and it will just go away. Okay? It's not probably not coming back towards to you anytime soon so close. It will come again but not as close, because he knows you don't want him there, okay? If you don't do that, you'll come closer and closer and closer, okay? Physical position, it's very simple. Food, not food. This is your position on the water, okay? Everything that shark bites generally floats like that. So when you're staying on this position, you're most likely to, to be mistaken by something that is supposed to be bitten. When you're standing like this, they get confused, they just get curious again. Okay? What the hell is this? So they'll come and check you out, okay? Try to control your heartbeat, okay? This is okay. This is food, okay? So all we have to do now, put on your suits, we'll load the boat and off we go to get some sharks, right? Let's go guys. Cool. sharks by chumming. We are not feeding these animals. This is not shark feeding, this is shark chumming, okay? So basically what we have is a green box uh, with some holes and that green box is full of tuna heads and a little bit of 
uh, tuna bits and sardines that are all smashed so we just create a nice chum line okay the boat is not anchored the boat is drifting so this will create a nice uh, line of chum attracting all the sharks in the area okay uh, like I said this is not fitting so we are not creating an association between people and food at the same time but what's the why this spot so right now we are on uh, more or less like a square of submarine cables and lately what we've been seeing is all this area here attracts the sharks and pago sharks they used to come and just stay uh, lately the behavior is, is changing a bit also because the aggregation is different sometimes we have when we have the big big sharks normally we don't have the small sharks uh, because they aggregate by sizes and gender genders and when, when we have the big big males normally we don't have the small ones because the bigger ones they eat the small ones do you see the same sharks return yes we, lately we've been uh, at least identified two sharks uh, one we call the scarface uh, he's around 2.5 meter uh, so i also identified another one with a bottom nose um, so yeah there are already two that we've been identifying over the years it's, cool. it's, so it's really, really, really nice that cool. we've seen the same animal over the three years, especially with all the shark fishing around. So it's I was going to ask, yeah. is there a problem around here with shark fishing? Yeah, it's all about bycatch. Uh, they don't target the blue shark, it's all about the bycatch of the swordfish. About 70-80% of the bycatch is, is blue shark. Uh, luckily, like, luckily, shark feeding was already uh, forbidden in the Azorian waters. Um, so when they come to discharge the fish, they have the same ratio between bodies and fins. Because before that, they used to just cut the fins, throw away the bodies, and the same boat would just fill up with fins and just discharge the bodies. So I believe it was uh, six, seven years ago, shark feeding was uh, prohibited in the Azorian waters, which was, was a massive victim. Yeah, that's good. bring him straight up to the surface so the skipper will also be throwing a little bit of chum on the surface during all the time so the sharks can come right at the surface that's where we want these animals uh, once the animal is quite used to everything I'm gonna jump on free diving just to see if the animal is stick to the human presence if it's all good I'm gonna come back to the boat put on my skipper unit and I'm gonna jump back into the water this is testing if the animal eels gonna stay with bubbles okay if everything is okay I'll come up to the surface I'll signal okay to everybody and you guys will jump into the water again so we got the word Bobby will get ready Chumming is definitely a controversial topic, but this was our first experience with it, so we wanted to sit back and observe. Despite all the blood already in the water, right when we jumped in, the sharks disappeared. For the next 30 minutes or so, Fabio shook the chum box until they gained enough confidence to return.
back home. Back home, just like that. That was a way longer experience than I thought it was gonna be, but it took us almost an hour to get out there. Two hours waiting after starting to chum the water, and then an hour in the water, and then about 30 minutes back. It's just crazy to think about how we were chumming the water for hours and dragging like a chum box in the water with sharks. And even at that rate, like they didn't really want to come near us. And they, they give off a certain energy in the water that's like no other shark that I've been in the water with. They're so calm and they're just, I don't know, they're just like a big curious fish. And they don't even look scary, right? Like some sharks. Yeah, they're just cute. teeth that are tucked in and like they're just kind of coming up to you and like brushing you. It's really cool. Dark chocolate. Hi. Are you the dark chocolate? <laughs> Look at Sam. Who sold this dog? <laughs> this is just their Red daily life, two. every day, all day. It's perfect. Pretty good life. <laughs> There's always the question if you could come back as any animal, what would it be? And a, a dog that lives on like a, what would you, would you call this a ranch? Mm -hmm. Okay, that lives on a horse ranch is pretty good. Today was going to be a fun one because I had found a barn on the island which offered full day horseback rides through the coastal countryside of Fayal. I had grown up riding in California, but since horses and sailing don't go all that well together, I always try to make time for an adventure on horseback wherever I can find one. I don't really remember the last time I rode, but I've been on horses quite a few times. Mom put me on a horse when I was like four, so started then. I um, volunteer on a, a horse riding school for disabled people in Vancouver Island. Brady and Ruben had only been on a horse once before, so they got a little crash course on Delos before heading out earlier that morning. But lucky for the boys, these horses seemed pretty mellow, and we had our new friend Diego to lead the way. It's really good horses for enjoying the trail. Nice. And what was the name of the breed again? Uh, Lusitano. Lusitano. Yeah, it's a Portuguese breed. Uh, we're riding up to the forest, close, near the, the coast. It's the mixed. Perfect. Yeah. Bit of everything, huh? All right. Yeah. You guys ready? And how are you going to assign Super each horse ready. to us? I will talk with you. Okay. You need to to tell me a little bit about your riding skills and I will give the horse. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. To be really honest with you, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Haven't ridden a horse in so long. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, man. It's gonna be fun, but just gotta get on it and feel it. So I've been given Kiwi. I Kiwi. Hi. You take care of me today? Yeah. Kiwi's a good horse. Kiwi's a good horse. Look. Honestly, I was feeling the same as Ruben. A bit nervous and unsure of what I was getting myself into. Here's this big, powerful animal with a mind of its own that I really didn't understand. Where's the mechanical throttle, the user manual, and most importantly, the brakes? But there was only one way to move forward. Hop on and stay calm. Or at least try to. Oh, you look good up there, Brady. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty much a real life cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, short of the reins. All right, here we go. <laughs> How feeling it's gonna be beautiful. Tunnel of fresh like this before. <laughs> it's not so good with a GoPro on the head. Get caught on a lot. Of hey. If you let the horse do what it wants to do, it's not good. Yeah, they test you right away. For sure. Oh. 
What's that? Heels down. Kiwi was definitely testing me, and I don't think I passed because Diego thought it would be a good idea to switch horses. Okay, here we go, a little canter. I'm still flying forward, I don't know why. Here you go, squeeze and kiss, Brady, squeeze and kiss. Okay, Brady, sit down, hands down, heels down. Ooh. Hands down. <laughs> I just hear Brady behind me making the funniest noises. <laughs> I just hear it back there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're doing so good, babe. What he said? Good job, Brady. Stay on the way. How was that little running bit there, Brady? Not good. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing. What do you think, Chris? Love it, man. It's so peaceful. It's such an interesting way to see the landscape. And to interact with an animal in a way of traveling is so unique. Sailing is unique. Horse riding is unique. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Put those hands down, boy. But I like them up. I like making <laughs> shots. Watch out in here. Yeah, hello. Like that? There you go. How beautiful is this little tunnel. Come on. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's like a fairy tale here. <laughs> Every uh, around each corner it just gets more and more and more unbelievably beautiful. You're getting some snacks along the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What'd you get? Raspberry. <laughs> They're really good though. There's all this wild mint on the side of the road right here. Wild mint. I think one of my favorite things about the Azores is seeing how many people actually grow their own food. Everyone has their own little yards and everyone's growing corn and all different kinds of things. And I don't know, just seems to make sense, right? Everyone has their own little plot and they grow what they want and then everyone shares together. Luckily for me, it was time to take a little break. One of the horses threw a shoe and it needed to be fixed on the spot. Yeah, it actually happened to my horse. And I switched halfway through because, I don't know, apparently the horse was, uh, and me weren't a good match. What do you think, Sion? They looked a bit sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> so I took over the guide's horse now, but let's see him fix the shoe. I don't feel anything. After chatting to Blue and Diego about some riding tips, it was time to get back on that horse for another shot. <laughs> How 
was that, Brady? Woo! I didn't hear any crazy noises coming from back I there this time. That time. Good job. So proud of you. I think I'm finally starting to get back there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you called me a cowboy, bro. You did? Nice. I like it, Luke. I like it. That's it. It's a lot of respect for horse riders, you know? It's so weird because you see something for so long or you see it so many times, but to actually do it to experience it's like riding a motorcycle that's alive. Yeah, right? It's really weird. <laughs> you kind of have to work together instead of just like manhandling a motorcycle. Right. Oh, I like it. Nice. made it back. I left a, I left a cowboy, I came back a cowman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay safe. We gotta get some work done today on Delos. So Sean's taking on the task. He's gonna replace the impeller and Maggie because she's really been overheating. Even though we still have water flow coming out of the, the outboard, something's not right. And I know we haven't touched that impeller in, I don't even know years and years and a long time. Yeah. So what was happening the other day when we took the dinghy out for the dive? So it was definitely getting hot, like the water pouring out was, was hot, hotter than it normally is. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, like it, while I was in gear, it just like slipped out of gear, but it was still in gear. It was like, and then like the, the prop wasn't spinning. Okay. So we just need to pull it out, but it's, what's cool about Delos, and well, I've seen a lot of other boats do this, but you can use the mizzen boom to help lift the outboard off the dinghy. So there's these little blocks on the on the back side of the, the boom. And uh, we're just gonna hook this onto the outboard. Just these small things that Sean and I always talk about with like boats that are properly well built, like boats that are built by sailors and not just people who like designing boats, you know? Like, that lines up perfectly, brings the outboard, and then there's this base here that's perfectly in the right spot. Uh, two-stroke engine mainly, you get water-cooled, and you get air-cooled. Now, with this two-stroke engine, it's water-cooled. How it is water-cooled is through these inlets on the side of the motor. Yeah, as the water comes over here, it gets forced into there. There's also suction happening that's yeah, sucking suction. water up. Yeah, and then because when this is spinning, it's spinning the shaft inside you, which is turning. When this is spinning, it's spinning the shaft. Yeah. Yeah. That water is then pumped into the engine by this impeller, which is turned by the actual motor spinning. That will then push water all the way up into the head and cool a jacket around the head to cool the actual engine block so it doesn't overheat. And yeah, if one of these little blades go or two or three blades start going, then you lose obviously all your pump, pumping circulation for the cooling of the water. And then you're going to start overheating the engine. And once you start overheating the engine, you're going to start scoring your block. You're going to start seizing rings. All the engines didn't have water cooled um, systems in them, it was all cooled by airflow. That's why if you see old engines, they got those big fins on them. And those fins obviously distribute the heat through the points of them and then they're air cooled. These days, everything's water cooled. That's what we're going to replace today. I have a feeling the impeller inside this is going to be not pretty cooled. interesting. Yeah. It's good. There's not going to be anything there. <laughs> okay, another good thing to do is keep all your nuts and bolts in one place on a boat because something rolls off, it's going to go boom and splash. So if you don't know where things go, um, take a picture of it or video record you taking it off so when you put it back, you just reverse the process. Now we're going to drop off the end. We made sure the tie rod is loose. It's not 100% loose now. So when I move it down, oh, there we go. It was 100%. <laughs> and now the whole bottom end drops out. Watch out for that. You don't want to scuff that because that's where it locates onto the shaft. 
and this is our water pump we're going to replace. We're going to take everything off here, inspect what the damage is, um, clean up the shaft, replace everything with the new parts and put it all back together. Another thing, it's good to just work on this upright because you've got oil in these chambers. So if this thing lies over, then you might get oil coming to the top. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth to see if our findings were right. Let's see if this water pump busted or not. So that comes off. Our impeller looks alright, so there's no problem there. Is the impeller all good? Yeah. Um, what the f <laughs> that's cool. But yeah, the pillar looks like it's in good nick. There's no major cracks or anything in it. And yeah, I'd say this thing's got a good few more miles on it. And you'll see there's a little groove there on the impeller. So when you're locating it, you got that yeah. groove. So it must go groove side down. Got a little key in there. And then that locates onto that. The key just stops it from spinning on the shaft because it's got a lot of friction holding around here. That's why these are bent inside that casing. And you'll see once the prop is spinning due to the motor turning, it turns a pump which pumps water. And when it pumps water, it pushes water down into there through that housing. And from there, it gets distributed all around the casing, cooling it down. So why is that? That is the selector for the gears. Yeah, this is the selector for the gear, but this is not the selector itself. The selector's up there. This is the selector shaft. Got the housing off, and as you can see, there's a lot of dirt. Many miles of different ocean in there. All built up, so yeah, we're just gonna clean it out and make a spick and span. Yeah, so we took the intake vents off. Remember which way they go around because you want the water flow to be coming in. And then yeah, just give it a general clean in here because all the dirt and grit and grime will get sucked up into here and damage the blades. And since we put a new housing, o-ring and a pillar in there and we don't want old grit coming in there and damaging our new the assembled housing and then you can see from here we've cleaned up the shaft as well. Keep it tidy, things work. So grease the tooth up here. It's good to use lithium grease or a waterproof grease. The important thing to remember, keep this as straight as you can. It goes in, give it a bit of a, a jiggle. So it all aligns, pass a bolt speak here. As you can see there's um, some high heat red Loctite on here. Um, I'm just going to put this in so it's located and then I'll put Loctite on the others and clean them up. Ready to go back in, brother? Ready to go back in. Hook it up. Got new gearbox oil in there. New impeller, housing, all cleaned out. So, yeah, let's see. Here you go. Good luck. for a spin. Let's see how hot she is. I'm gonna give it a touch feel. Oh good! Not too bad. Can hold, can hold my hand there for a while which is good. One is good. Got a good flow. Yeah. What are you swinging on Blue? Our brand new five panel Delos hats. Which one do you like better? This one? Or this one? Uh, I like the blue better. The blue better? Yeah. That's just because you like blue. <laughs> <laughs> did you just give her the classic oh, Kia cut Yeah, off? I did a Kia cut off to Kia. I gave her some of her own medicine, just a little little sprinkle. No, she she always is, well, not always, occasionally she'll be filming you and then she'll come along and just like stop. <laughs> like, Kia, no. I was saying she'll something. Just turn the camera off. She's like, shh, shh, shh. It happened two or three times. It's enough to make a make a an impact. <laughs>
<laughs> not a lot of stallions. Although I did ride a stallion Pasofino in Puerto Rico, which I, that was only my second time riding a stallion, so that was cool. Tell me about it. Yeah. Young Bucks. My experience is more with Young Bucks. Before this. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? I don't understand the joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's better that way, it's better that way. <laughs> Alright, give us a new end screen for the like, subscribe, ad. Ads. Hey, you ever want to go sailing, but really not want to leave your couch? Turn on to sdaylos.com and come along for the ride. Mm, I like it. I like it, I like it a lot. Exactly.